Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to Senior to Biology, and the topic is soil. I don't know whether you have ever heard about the study of soil. You're welcome, and in this topic we are going to take you through uh, the topic of soil. I will be together with my colleague, Mr. Mkangala Michael, as the teachers of Senior 2 Biology. So you're welcome. Well, before we go through uh, the, the content in soil, I would like to bring to your attention some of the facts about soil. To begin with, did you know that soil is actually a living system? Yes, it is. Because soil has a lot of microorganisms in it. And did you know that just a handful of soil can have a number of microorganisms that is more than the population of your country? Yes, we are talking about bacteria, the protists, the fungi, the nematodes, the annelids, and so on. All of them are in soil, and they are extremely many. Most of them, of course, are microscopic, and you cannot see them. So that's why we say soil is a living system. And actually, it takes so long to produce soil. The process through which soil is produced takes a very long time. It's estimated that it can take to up to 500 years for us to have just one inch of soil produced. So therefore, when you have soil, you must protect it because it takes so long to produce, especially the most valuable part of the soil. Soil, of course, provides nutrients that are used by organisms for survival, especially the plants. Soil also acts as a filter for underground water, filtering out pollutants. Most of us take water from the boreholes, and this water is actually clean because it has undergone filtration processes and all the pollutants have been removed. So you can even just take it like that. However, the power hole is near the latrines and so on. The, the, the public health officials should be able to guide on how best the power hole can be located. Otherwise, that water is supposed to be very clean for consumption. And then uh, soil is responsible for absorption of a lot of carbon dioxide. And you know carbon dioxide is responsible for causing acidic rain. So, and you know, this, this water eventually, the, the carbonic acid formed, is dissolved in the soil. So soil plays a role in removing carbon from the atmosphere. And then, quick facts about the composition of the soil. Soil contains about 45% minerals, 25% water, 25% air, 5% organic matter. So those are the components of soil uh, there. And then you know that soil is at the bottom of the food chain. Uh, all organisms that feed actually gain their nourishment from the soil and then other subsequent organisms feed on those ones that feed on the soil uh, content and the, the plant content. The ones we call the producers. Uh, the worms, like the earthworms, enrich the topsoil by feeding on the organic material in the soil and converting it into nutrients for the plants to use. So as they move through the soil, the soil becomes more aerated and more absorbent. They actually create uh, holes in the soil that air can saturate in. So that's what we call aeration of the soil. Uh, well, one of the U.S. presidents Franklin D. Roosevelt once said that the nation that destroys its soil actually destroys itself. And I think that might be true, that we must protect the soil. We know soil is used in different ways. For example, production of construction materials. It's used for burial of dead people. It has very many uses, as you may see there. It's also responsible for supporting life of different organisms. You can see that food web there. Soil is used for agriculture, and you can see those beautiful ladies smiling after harvesting. Uh, soil is a source of minerals, and people do mining in the soil. 
even the most precious like the gold is always get uh, got in the soil however a lot of environmental degradation has not spared the soil so soil has been damaged in one way or the other and as a result we have suffered from landslides like you remember the ones in Bududa recently uh, we have suffered uh, you saw many villages being swept away by the muds the mudslides and the landslides you saw a lot of floods in Kasese recently including one of the hospitals was swept away by the by the floods Kilembe hospital and people died including UPDF soldiers who were in the rescue team so should we start about soil now yes I think having looked at the advantages of soil and having looked at the dangers that are facing soil it's important that we look at it so that in the future we should be able to utilize soil very well to get the best from it without necessarily damaging it so but before we go into details about soil conservation and so on i would like to ask to start with the definition of soil so what is soil well soil is a finely divided material covering the earth's crust or earth's surface and what does it contain <clears throat> it consists of air water uh, human living organisms and weathered rock particles so you will be asked to define what soil is so together how do we define soil we said soil is a finely divided material covering the earth's crust or the earth's surface consisting of air water humus living organisms and weathered rocks so what are the importances of soil or how is soil used there are very many but for the purposes of this lesson we shall mention the key uh, uses of the soil to begin with it's a medium for plant growth all the plants that we see in our environment actually grow from the soil so what would it be without soil it would mean that we would not have yes so soil is important for plant growth it also means for storage supply and purification of water so soil already we said is very useful for water purification and also supply even the water in the lakes uh, in most cases also comes from the, the soil it uh, percolates through the soil layers and ends up in the water bodies so soil is very important soil is also a habitat for many organisms such as the earthworms the termites the bacteria the arthropods the fungi and so on and we have always uh, dug soil and you see there either earthworms you see either termites uh, so it means those organisms actually find their home in the soil so it's a very good habitat for very many microorganisms it also provides a medium through which man and other animals dispose their wastes we know that we do many people dump waste in the soil you have gone to the dumping site in your city or in your district you see that there are very many piles of cavera of wastes and so on and they always make use of soil to dump these things such that they can decompose so soil is very vital uh, in that area it's also an important natural resource which provides construction material and also supports agriculture art and craft industries yes you have seen very many agricultural companies established for example the kakira sugar works you've seen the kibimba rice scheme uh, and so on and also people laying bricks using soil and many other activities are being done in the soil uh, well those are some of the functions or importances of soil but members how is the soil formed we have been talking of soil 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 but where does it come from mm -hmm. so we are going to look at how soil is formed so generally it is formed from parent rocks by the process called weathering by the process called what weathering and this occurs for a long period of time for weathering to take place 
And for us to have soil formed, it takes a lot of time, sometimes hundreds or even thousands of years. So it takes a lot of time. And the process of weathering takes place in three major ways. Who knows those three major ways? Well, I know you know them. If you have forgotten, we are going to look at them one by one. And to begin with, we have physical weathering. We have what? Physical weathering. And this process takes place in the following ways. In the first way, there is alternate heating and cooling of rocks on the exposed mountain sides, which causes expansion and contraction. And this leads to the breaking of the rocks. So during the day when it is very hot, the rocks will heat up and they will expand. During the night, or when it is cold, the rocks will contract. So there will be contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion. And after a long period of time of expansion and contraction, the rock may be forced to break. And that will be the process through which soil can start being formed. The second one is through by water. This is where rivers and streams wear away the rocks over which they flow by rolling pebbles and other hard particles through them. For example, when it, there is a lot of flood, a lot of water flowing, for example, in the, river, the rivers or even down the mountain stream, you realize that water moves under a very high speed and carries hard materials, including other small rocks. And as this water moves, with these rock particles, they rub against other rocks. And as a result, those rocks wear out, forming smaller particles that eventually will lead to formation of soil. The other one is, as a result of sandstorms, when wind blows against bare rocks with sandstorms, the rocks will be forced to break into smaller particles and eventually soil will start forming. Through frosting or freezing. And during the freezing level, for example, who knows the freezing level? This is the, the temperature at which water turns into ice. It's about zero degrees Celsius. So when the water is found in the rocks, remember some rocks have gaps and water can enter there. Now, when, when water freezes, it actually expands. So when it freezes and expands, it forces the rock particles to break. And as a result, the soil will start forming. So the processes I have talked about do not involve any reaction and do not involve action of any living thing on the rocks. These ones are what we call the physical processes that act on rocks to produce soil. And that kind of formation of soil through physical processes is what we call physical weathering. So we can see um, that rock there. Who can tell us which process happened there? Well, I can see some ice in the background. So probably there was water in between that gap. And when the water keeps on freezing, and the, the, the rock is, the water expands, the ice expands, and the rock is forced to break. So that kind of weathering is what you call physical what? Uh, physical weathering. And after a long period of time, you will see rocks forming, small particles of rock, and small pebbles, and then eventually soil uh, will be formed. So that, those are physical processes, and that is physical weathering. The other method or the other way in which soil is formed is through chemical weathering. So what happens in chemical weathering? So this one is basically, when we talk about chemical, we are talking about reactions. Uh, we are talking about chemical reactions. So in this case, what actually happens is that uh, when it rains, this water, first of all, is a chemical. Water is a chemical in its own way uh, because it contains hydrogen and oxygen, but also water is a solvent and is capable of dissolving 
carbon dioxide. And we know when water combines with carbon dioxide, it forms carbonic acid. And we know carbonic acid has an effect on carbonates. And some of these rocks are formed from carbonates. They are carbonate rocks. For example, you see limestone and so on. Those are carbonates. So these carbonates react with, carbon di uh, with carbonic acid from the rainwater and they are worn out. The reaction leads to breakdown of these rocks to form soil. Yes? And of course, many other reactions take place. So in general, when conditions are favorable for reactions to take place, and when solvents are available, for example, water, the rocks are forced to dissolve or to break down into smaller particles, and eventually, uh, soil will be formed from these rocks. And after a long period of weather, uh, chemical weathering, you will see some small holes forming from the soil. The way you see that one there, it means those parts there were reacted with with water or with the acids or with other chemicals and eventually the rock was worn out and then soil will be forming from that rock over a period of time so after a long period of time you can see under that rock you will see some soil has been forming and eventually it will support plant growth and then the, the third method or the third type of weathering is what we call biological weathering so the moment we talk about anything biological, we're talking about living things. Anything biological is living to do with living things. So this is brought about by action and presence of living organisms on rocks. Certain organisms such as lichens are able to grow on bare rocks, while other small flowering plants are able to grow between the rock fragments. Uh, when these die, they form humus, which is a component of soil. So man contributes to biological weathering as well through direct splitting of rocks during road constructions. You have probably seen when roads are constructed, this is heavy machinery. The caterpillars and the graders break rock particles to remove maram or to open way for the road to pass. And in the long run, the rocks are broken and soil will form. So anything biological weathering is to do with living things. Yeah, living things acting on rocks. Either plants growing on rocks and breaking them down, or man acting on rocks and using them for his own activities and hence soil will be formed. We can see an example there of biological weathering where you can see the tree is growing in between of in between the rock particles and uh, you can imagine how many pebbles of rock have been broken down to lead to production of soil so members i want to thank you very much for listening and for following this lesson lesson two will be conducted by mr mkanga and michael and uh, i will meet you again in lesson three Thank you very much. Uh, stay safe.